What is up, my sweaties? R&B coming at you from deep inside industry studios in Castaic, California. Here's where I have my office and edit bay where I'm currently editing the indie comedy Tango Shalom. I have a lot of my collection of odds and ends here inside my edit bay to give me all kinds of inspiration when I'm working long hours. So I figured I'd show you around my office and try and explain to you all why exactly am I so obsessed with Hot Toys figures. It really all began when I was a little kid. My favorite toys in the world were six scale, 12 inch G.I. Joe action figures. They had real hair and later Kung Fu grip. This was the adventure team. They had the greatest accessories, the greatest vehicles. They were the greatest toys in the world. They even had a submarine that you could submerge in a bathtub or a swimming pool. They had an amazing headquarters and they had what I thought was the greatest vehicle of all time, the mobile support vehicle. But then some brain trust gave us this guy, Bullet Man, a faux superhero to join the adventure team. It was the first time as a kid I thought a toy was stupid. But then Mego came along, offering us the world's greatest superhero 8-inch action figures, and I forgot all about G.I. Joes. But even as a kid, I'd get pissed off when toy companies did stupid things, like give me this kind of a Batmobile with a Batman sticker on the door? Really? Where was the Bat insignia? Why was it too small? Why couldn't it look like a real Batmobile? Why were they making a Hulk figure that was 8 inches like every other figure? Or making Iron Man's armor out of fabric? Or worse yet, the Human Torch's flames out of fabric. They gave us Tarzan, whose bare skin was made of fabric. And Mego didn't stop with superheroes, they got other licensed properties like Star Trek, Planet of the Apes. Heck, Mego even got the Wizard of Oz. If you wanted licensed figures, Mego was your company. And they made Micronauts. And for a long time, Mego was the coolest toy company on the planet Earth. But they kept doing stupid things. Like the Star Trek aliens, the Gorn was dressed in a Klingon outfit. The Keeper, who looks like Baylock, kind of? I don't know. Then in 1977, action figures changed forever with the release of Star Wars. Kenner Toys introduced a three and three quarter inch action figure line and everybody in the universe bought Star Wars action figures including me and I love them but secretly I also hated them because none of them looked anything like what they were supposed to look like why couldn't the land speeder look like a land speeder why did Luke Skywalker look like this why were the lightsabers in two pieces why did the TIE fighter have to have small wings and why was I supposed to be excited about some spring-loaded feature where the wings would blow off the side of the TIE fighter to simulate an explosion I could do that in my own imagination but anyway I bought them all and everybody loved them. And now, over 30 years later, never in my wildest childhood imaginings could I have ever foreseen that action figures have been taken to a high art. And Hot Toys is the absolute pinnacle of this. It's exactly what I dreamt of when I was a child, feeling disappointed in almost every licensed toy I ever bought. This is my Hot Toys case in my office. The top shelf for the Avengers and other Marvel characters. I mean, look at the likenesses. I love assembling them together. There's even a little Guardians of the Galaxy flavor in there. Then, of course, we got two eras of Superman, two jor -Els. we've got civilian Dark Knight characters, and the Dark Knight himself. The third level, I've got Bat Villains, two generations of those as well, Tim Burton Batman. I've got four different Wolverines, fantastic. Then on the bottom level, I got sci-fi movies, I got Robocop and Ed 209, I got The Crow, I got Jeff Bridges from Tron Legacy, I got the Alien from Alien 3, I got a Predator, I got two Terminators, and I got Ripley. These are some of my favorite figures. The first Hot Toys figures I noticed in the aughts were the Predator and the Alien figures they did. The Predator figures have always been great, but these this is the re-release of the Celtic Predator. The first Predator figures they had to release as action figure kits. This is, of course, Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Look at the facial sculpt on this, it's amazing. Look at the clothing, it's just beautifully tailored. So much fun. Here's, of course, Jor-El and Superman. They only released Jor-El for Superman Returns and never in the United States. But this Christopher Reeve figure is amazing. I love keeping the two of them together. I like to believe they're supposed to be together. Uh, that head sculpt is an 11 years old. Uh, Hot Toys is as far surpassed that. Anthony Mackie's The Falcon is a favorite figure of mine. I mean, look at the detail on the costuming, the detail on the uh, on his wings. The engineering is just stunning on figures like this, and they have the new stand, so it can hold our characters aloft. This is, of course, Captain Harlock from Lee J. Matsumoto's uh, Galaxy Express 999 universe. I love this character. This is from the CG movie that was released a few years ago. Just a fantastic animation figure. Love it. And my favorite Hot Toys figure, uh, this is Rocket and Groot. Again, the engineering on this figure is amazing. The paint tops, everything about this figure is just stunning. These guys come together or separately. Just amazing figures. I love having them together. And this is, of course, my favorite Hot Toys figure of all time. The Don himself. Vito Corleone from The Godfather, what a face sculpt. 
He's my third Marlon Brando figure I have. I think what I love most about action figures is they're the distillation of all the imagination that went into creating those characters in the first place. Their legacy of talented writers and artists and animators and visual effects technicians and actors and everyone who contributed to the legacy of those characters can be distilled down into one figurine. One figurine that goes on a desk. A figurine that can inspire you every time you wake up in the morning. That's kind of how I always felt about action figures and I guess that's why I've always loved them so much. That, and we finally live in a time where I can get a Batmobile that looks like the Batmobile. A Batmobile that's properly scaled, that fits the characters the way it's supposed to fit the characters. We live in wondrous times, my friends. Don't I always say that?